Welcome to the Night Sky, your monthly guide to the best objects and events that you can get out to see in astronomy. I'm Michael Martin, and through this series, I hope to encourage you to go out to explore our nighttime sky, regardless of your experience level or any equipment that you may or may not own. Let's begin this month by going outside to take a look at the best meteor showers coming up for the month of October. The month of October hosts two meteor showers for us to go out to see and enjoy. The first one's a variable shower. Now these are less impressive than the major meteor showers, but they can surprise us on certain years with high rates of meteors streaking through the nighttime sky. For October, we have the Draconids. At a rate of five to 10 meteors per hour, this probably won't be much of a show due to the moon getting in the way this year. But if you head out on the night of October 8th and look towards the constellation Draco, you may see a few more meteors than usual streaking across the nighttime sky. The major meteor shower for the month of October is the Orionids. This is from the remnants of Halley's Comet as the orbit of it and Earth interact around this time every single year, allowing the trail of debris left behind from Halley's Comet to enter the upper portions of our atmosphere, putting on a pretty nice light show for us here down below. To see the Orionids, go outside on the morning of October 21st around 1 a.m. in the morning and look towards the east. There you will see the impressive constellation Orion slowly rising into the night sky. It's from this area of space where the Orionids will shoot from. With the moon out of the way for most of the morning, you can hope to see around 10 to 20 meteors per hour. For any meteor shower, you're going to want to get away from as much light pollution as you possibly can. Also, be sure to dress comfortably for the weather depending on where you live around the world, and take a blanket or a lounge chair to lay back and look up at as much of the sky as you can to try to pick out the streaks of light moving through it. If you're able to get out to observe this or any other event this month, please like this video and let me know about your experiences in the comments section below. Let's move away from the atmosphere of our planet a little bit deeper into space by taking a look at our closest neighbor, the moon, for the month of October. Now this is obviously something that you can go out and see with the naked eye, but a pair of binoculars or a small telescope is really going to bring the lunar surface to life. Let's begin by taking a look at the phases for the moon for this month, beginning with the first quarter moon on October 2nd. There's no better time to go out and study the surface of the moon than right after sunset when the shadows of the lunar surface stretch across the face of it, creating a beautiful scene for visual observing and imaging. For those of you who are looking to take a picture of the moon, try connecting or holding your phone up to the eyepiece of a telescope to snap a few pictures or take a quick video of the lunar surface. After the first quarter phase, we have the full moon on October 9th, the last quarter on the 17th, and a new moon on the 25th. In terms of the moon making any close approaches to the planets this month, we've got it coming pretty close to Saturn on October 5th, Jupiter on the 8th, Uranus on the 11th, and Mars on the 14th. As we continue our exploration of the night sky, let's move on to the planets and asteroids of our solar system. We begin this month as we always do with the planet Mercury. You're going to have to get up pretty early in the morning to see this one, and it's going to be at its highest point in the east around October 8th. From that point on, it's going to be moving lower and lower to the horizon, and it'll become a much harder target as the month goes on. We've been tracking Venus for the past few months as it transitions from an early morning to early evening target, and sadly for the month of October, it is practically unobservable as it swings around the sun, making its way back above the horizon once we enter the month of November. At around 1 a.m. in the morning, 
Mars will be a good height for observations in the east. Although I'm still holding off on imaging this target until November as it makes its closest approach to Earth in early December. Jupiter and Saturn dominate the nighttime sky for the month of October as they have for the past several weeks. Go outside and look for these bright objects with just the naked eye. And then see if you can spot the moons of Jupiter through a pair of binoculars. If you own a telescope, take it out and study the cloud belts of Jupiter and the gorgeous rings of Saturn. As beautiful as Saturn is, it's really Jupiter that excites me more every night I go out to see it. The dynamic orbit of its Galilean moons and the structure of its cloud belts are different on a nightly and even hourly basis. I've recently imaged both of these planets for my new series, The Joy of Astrophotography, and I'll be sure to leave a link to those episodes in the description below. Also, if you're able to get out to take a picture of anything in the nighttime sky, please share that with me over on Instagram. And if you're enjoying this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. Now let's finish out the solar system by taking a look at two planets that are the farthest out, meaning you're going to need probably a medium or larger telescope to make out any of the disk for these two objects. We're talking about Uranus and Neptune. Uranus will be visible starting around 11 p.m. in the east, and Neptune is visible all night this month as it travels right alongside Jupiter. For those of you looking to hunt down an asteroid for the month of October, take out your telescope and look for the brightest one up there, Vesta. It'll be traveling just below Saturn through the constellation Capricornus this October. Try to track it from night to night to see how different its speed and trajectory is compared to the other stars that make up the background of space. As we move beyond our solar system, we enter deep space. It's important to always remember for these objects that the best views of them are going to come from larger telescopes that can collect more light, especially if you're fighting against light pollution for where you live. Also, always temper your expectations when you go out to see these, but don't have that take away from the experience of how incredible it is to see them. Oftentimes we'll see colorful images online or on YouTube videos, and sometimes that can take away from the experience of a gray blur when we're looking at it through the lens of a telescope. For the month of October, let's begin by going out around 9 p.m. and looking towards the Northeast. There you will come across the Triangulum Galaxy, M33. This object can actually be viewed from very dark locations with just the naked eye, but it's also very susceptible to light pollution. See if you can make out the spiral arms of this galaxy through your telescope if the sky conditions are good enough for where you live. Next, let's move over to the Little Dumbbell Nebula. This planetary nebula is quite faint and will definitely take a larger telescope to make out much of its detail, but it's also a fun object to observe visually. Now let's focus on really three objects in one by studying the Great Andromeda Galaxy. Now when you're viewing Andromeda through a telescope, you will have a hard time seeing the intricate details that showed up in this long exposure image. But you will be able to make out at least the core of this object and its companion galaxies, M31, and M110. Take your time studying Andromeda with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, and remember that the light that you're seeing from this object has been traveling for over 2.5 million years to reach your binoculars or telescope. Space is really big, and I'm sure there are some things that I've left off the list this month that you're excited to go out to see or image. Please let us know about any of those things and your questions and experiences out observing in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.